Hi students, we go to the next chapter called the projection of plane surfaces. We have seen lines, now we are going to draw plan and elevation of surfaces. After drawing plan and elevation of surfaces, we will go to plan and elevation of solid objects. Plane, projection of planes is comparatively easy. There is something to see in this. There is something to see. So you can get see and confirm yourself. This is an equilateral triangular lamina. This is a square lamina, very thin square lamina. This is a rectangular lamina. This is a pentagonal lamina. Include angle 108, regular pentagon. This is a hexagonal lamina. Include angle 120 degrees, regular hexagon. This is a circular lamina. This surfaces or light, uh, surf, uh, lamina can be kept in space in various positions and you have to draw the plan and elevation. Now, let us assume this lamina is parallel to HP. What will be the plan of this lamina? It will be a regular shape, rectangle. What will be its elevation? Elevation will be a line. Because you see this, it is perpendicular to VP. When the lamina is parallel to HP, it will be perpendicular to VP. So, its elevation will be a line. It can lie on HP. Then the plan will be true shape and elevation will be a line on XY line. If it is above HP, plan will be regular shape and elevation will be a line above XY. The orientation can change. The shape will not change. The orientation of the object will be changing and the orientation of the plan also will be changing. But the elevation will be a line. The length of the elevation also changes. When the lamina is like this, length of the elevation is small. When it is like this, length of the elevation is small. When it is like this, it will be longer again. So when a lamina is parallel to a plane, the lamina is perpendicular to VP. Agreed? Second possibility is lamina parallel to VP. When the lamina is parallel to VP, elevation will be true size and plan will be a line. When the lamina is on VP, elevation will be true size, plan will be a line on XY line. When it is away from VP, elevation will be true size and plan will be a line below XY. You can have any distance. The orientation can change. As long as it is parallel to VP, elevation will be true size, true shape, in various positions, various orientations. Generalizing, we can say, when a lamina is parallel to a plane, it is automatically perpendicular to the other plane. When a lamina is parallel to a plane, it automatically is perpendicular to the other plane. One lamina, one plane might be reference plane, might be parallel, but a reference plane might be perpendicular to it. Lamina is plane might be parallel to the plane. In that plane, projection is true. In that plane, projection is true. In that plane, the projection to the plane to which it is parallel will be true shape. And the projection to the other plane will be a line. Agreed? Such positions are called simple positions. What is simple position? When a lamina is parallel to a plane, it is called a simple position. A lamina can never be parallel to both planes together. It cannot be parallel to both planes. When it is parallel to one plane, it is perpendicular to the other. Okay, we are going to see this lamina in various positions and we are going to draw them. To learn lamina very well, it is always advisable to make models of this. You can use marriage invitation cards, Christmas cards, birthday cards, greeting cards, etc. and cut these shapes. So that you can see and confirm yourself, see and believe yourself. What we are speaking, learning. You can see and believe. That's the easiest way. Agreed? Your questions for the examination purpose will be from that category where the lamina is inclined to both planes. See? Lamina is inclined to HP, lamina is inclined to VP also. You will get there are questions from that category. You cannot directly draw them. You have to go from this simple position, then go to one inclination, then go to the second inclination. That's the sequence. Okay. First of all, we will see, first of all, we will see lamina 
inclined to HP and perpendicular to BP. Then we will see lamina inclined to BP and perpendicular to HP. Okay. Before going there, let us see how these geometries are drawn, geometrical construction. Many people waste unnecessarily more than necessary amount of time to draw them. Okay. How do you draw an equilateral triangle? Easiest method. Draw the side, given side. Take the same side in your compass. Cut arcs with these two ascenders to get the third corner. There is no easier way. This angle will be 60. This will be 60. This will be 60. This is the easiest way to draw an equilateral triangle. But many people draw a line, measure 60 degrees, draw a line, measure 60 degrees, draw a line to get the third, third corner. Waste of time. You will lose one minute there. That is not necessary. Second thing is to draw a square. Draw the given side. Measure 90 degrees, draw a line. Measure 90 degrees, draw a line. Take the distance and mark on them. Connect. 99. You need to measure in two places. Rectangle is similar to this. Only the thing is it is longer. What about the pentagon? Draw one side. Draw one side. Measure 108 degrees and draw a line. Measure 108 degrees and draw a line. 108. 108. Take this distance in your compass. Mark on this. Mark on this. These two are centers. Draw arcs to get the fifth comma. I repeat. Draw a line. Measure 108. Draw a line. Measure 108. Draw a line. Take this distance. Cut on this. Cut on this. These two points are obtained. These two are centers. Draw arcs to get the fifth corner. That's the easiest to make. You need to measure 108 only in two places. Next is a hexagon. How will you draw a hexagon? The easiest method is draw the circle whose radius is equal to the diameter of the hexagon. Every side of the hexagon. Draw a circle whose radius is equal to the side of the hexagon. If the side of the hexagon is 30, draw a circle 30 radius. Draw a horizontal diameter. Very light. You have got the comp in your compass the radius. The radius is there in your compass. These two are centers. Draw arcs here, here, here and here. This is center. Cut here and here. This is center. Cut here and here. What is the radius? Radius is the the radius in the compass is the radius of the circle. Connect. What do you get? You get the hexagon. What side? Third side. Agreed? Now, if you draw the circle dark, you will end up in trouble. The circle must be very, very light. Because we are going the we are going the going to draw the hexagon. We need a hexagon, not a circle. Okay. When you draw the horizontal diameter, you get two sides of the hexagon like this. If you want these two sides to be vertical, what do you have to do? Take you have to take a vertical diameter. If you have to get these two lines, these two lines at some angle, take that diameter. Take the diameter at that angle. That's all. The diameter which you initially choose depends upon how you want the side of the hexagon be. Agreed? That's all. So we are learned the basics of geometrical shapes which are necessary for us to draw this particular chapter. Okay then. Draw and let. I, I expect you will make all these models and look at it and confirm its shape and peculiarities. Okay. Thank you.